So we're Ring Straighter. We're kind of from all over the place, originally from Chicago. How many of us have seen us before? Okay, this is great. Thank you so much for coming out again. Look, we want to thank all the people associated with Philly Hardcore Shows, and this is Hardcore Chris. Joe, who's not here, but it's on video, so I have to say it. <laughs> no, Ghost, everybody that helps out makes this thing a community. It's more than just, the, you know, like, concerts, right? These, it's not even shows. These are like our meetup places. For some of us, this is our church. This is where we go to see our friends and family and talk about the things that are important to us. I also want to give a big, you know, shout out to Sunny here. <laughs> So if any of you have ever wondered what socialism looks like, socialism looks like badass hardcore videos for free all the time. I'm starting to tell us all that. We want this to be a good experience for all of us. Thank you so much. Approach called Cypher. You might have heard of that. 
this is in Long Island, New York, and we pull up to the venue, and I get out of the car, and literally, the first car in front of the venue has a big Blue Lives Matter bumper sticker in front of the Cypher Race Trader show. I thought, like, does this person know what they're paid for? <laughs> you know, the thing is, the way that bumper sticker misses the point is not the way a lot of people think. Because the question it's trying to answer isn't even the question. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times we talk about when, you know, people are killed, unarmed black men are killed by the cops, a lot of times we've been having debates about what's the appropriate use of police violence. You know, did they shoot too soon? Should they have said stop? Should they shot him in the leg? Should they use the taser, right? Guy gets shot in his grandmother's backyard with a cell phone, we talk about tactics. I'm from New York City. I live in New York City now. We all saw Eric Garner get choked to death, right? That horrible, horrible thing. And everyone focuses on the moment he said, I can't breathe, you should have backed off. But when I see that video, I see something different, and I wanted to hopefully draw your attention to that. I see the cop talking to him in the first place is the crime. Going up to him in the first place is the crime. Because you guys remember what Eric Garner was doing? It was so evil that he got executed for? Selling cigarettes. Selling cigarettes. In New York City, that's a crime punishable by arrest or death. And all Eric Garner was saying was, leave me alone, man. Like, come on, I've had enough. Leave me alone. And he was killed in Staten Island. You look across the island in the shadow of fucking the towers of Wall Street. Were people there bankrupt the world economy to the tune of $17 billion. And when you lose $17 billion, that means people lose their homes, their jobs, their health insurance, and they die of whatever disease they can no longer get treated. That's a fucking crime. But did the police show up to fucking Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley? No, because the question is not what's the complete correct police tactic. The question is what is the question is what is the fucking police? Not the individual cop. The Blue Lives Matter bumper sticker was probably somebody's uncle and he might be a great guy. But the police are the tip of the iceberg of white power. And Eric Gardner's death was not chosen by that cop who choked him out. It was chosen before he was born, when that instrument of violence was pointed at poor black neighborhoods to control them, to cage them for corporate profits, for political power. That's the fucking crime. It's not the police tactics. It's what is the police in the first place? And in this city, you got a guy by the name Larry Krasner, who's one of the yeah. few people who's trying to do something about it. So you need to pay attention, because Philly, you guys are on the front line of fucking changing the whole game.
Kanashi does it's because they fucking work at the Wawa. If that's not legit, I don't know what is. <laughs> and all this gear, at least a lot of it is paper trails. It's fucking amazing that you can meet somebody literally one day and the next day you're friends because communities like this provide that level of trust. So thank you for, to those guys and thank you for the punctuality. <laughs> we love them. We all play this kind of sick music and people ask me all the time, like people who are not from this scene, like my parents, friends and shit like that. <laughs> See, why are you so angry? What's with all the yelling? What's with all the yelling? And I say, I look at my whole fucking life. You know, I've had very, a lot of comfort. I'm not going to try to, you know, cancer priest says, like, don't fucking rap like you come from a shitty neighborhood. I didn't come, I came from a fucking posh place. Motherfucking posh. But I'm the son of immigrants, and immigrants from a particular country, Iran, which is in the news all the time because they're one of the number one boogeymen in the media, and for our government. Yeah. And you know, when you live as this sort of half American, half whatever, half enemy, half friend, it's a weird fucking existence. You're always waiting for the other shoe to drop because you're Iranian or Muslim or Middle Eastern or brown or whatever it all equates to fucking camel jockey terrorist. That's what the kids in the school said. They were probably right. And then there's always this threat, right? One day they ban your family from visiting. The next day they ban you from sending money to your family. And now, President Shit for Brains <laughs> appoints this guy named John Bolton to be his national security advisor. If you don't know who John Bolton is, look it up. This is the fucking one of the architects of the Iraq War. And I hope you remember the Iraq War, where the US government lied to you, preyed on your fears, took your money, Gave it to fucking arms dealers. They're not corporations, people. They're fucking arms dealers. To fucking bomb brown people, which resulted in what? Destabilizing the entire fucking region into civil war. And then we're supposed to get behind it because of what? Because the troops who never made that decision in the first place because of some fucking yellow ribbon? That's my whole fucking life. But the next bomb that drops is on my grandmother, is on my friends. People who live under a shitty government, an oppressive government, no doubt. But people who are willing to fight that government but can't do so when it's destabilized by US fucking bombs. So when John Bolton starts telling you about the threat, don't fucking buy it. We can't afford another war. And not just the Americans and the human beings, the citizens of the planet. There's got to be a better fucking way my whole fucking life. Let's end this shit.